We live in a truly amazing world. Human history is vast and beautiful, but there are a thousand things we do not know or understand about our past. As such, archaeologists still seek out further understanding of our ancestors and try to gain insight into their extensive cultures. So today, here at Unexplained Mysteries, we'll be taking a look at three extraordinary discoveries related to our mysterious past. Mysterious Humanoids Carved by Native Americans Found in Alabama Within the dark depths of an Alabama cave, an awe-inspiring discovery was made. Human-like figures were carved on the ceiling, dating back at least 1,000 years, but scientists say it could very well be more. Archaeologists think that these strange humanoid depictions could be paintings of supernatural beings from another realm. The figures may symbolize beings of the supernatural world whose names have been misplaced or forgotten by the sands of time. The humanoids are tall and long, and although some of them resemble humans, something feels off about them. Those who have seen them claim that they get a strange sensation of the uncanny valley. The discovery of these ancient cave paintings is the largest such discovery in Northern America. The Journal of Antiquity, which wrote about these findings, claims that some of these figures exceed six feet in length. They have square shoulders and are dressed in detailed clothing, adorning some sort of headgear. Furthermore, they are painted to look right at the person observing them. Such traits make many archaeologists believe that they are indeed non-human creatures. The cave is covered with ancient glyphs, carved all around its walls and ceiling. The glyphs are painted with mud and researchers believe the findings could reveal much about the ancient traditions of the southeastern Native Americans that once lived there. Archaeologist Jan Simek has stated, We know that Native Americans over a very wide area have certain ideas in their religious concepts that they share. They believe in a tiered universe. They believe that there were these spirit worlds all around them that permeate the natural world, even though you couldn't see them. Simek worked alongside Alvarez and Alan Kressler, two brilliant photographers. The discovery and capture of their images took many months for them to obtain. Alvarez and Alan Kressler struggled to take quality photographs of the painted ceiling because of how close it was to the ground. The angles were far from ideal. The first photographs of the glyphs taken by Alvarez were incredibly faint. It took them a long time, over a month, to gain the required footage for the task. According to Alvarez, I feel like there are stories that get entrusted to me. That was the motivation behind doing all the work. The team gathered 16,000 images and videos in order to successfully map out the ceiling in all its glory. Alvarez claims that they knelt and stooped for hours on end every day, greatly exerting themselves physically to complete their project. Archaeologists have deemed these figures anthropomorphs. Simek claims that they potentially embody either human-like spirits from the mystical world or could just as well be representations of people wearing masks and costumes. It depends wholly upon what tribe resided in this cave all those centuries ago, their beliefs, culture and relationship to the spirit realm. The depicted individuals on the cave ceiling and walls likely stem from the tribe's personal traditions. As such, until we find out more information about the ancient inhabitants of this cave, we will be unable to know for certain what these humanoids are supposed to symbolize. Simek believes they clearly represent a character or a set of characters that we've never seen before. University of South Alabama's Professor of Native American Studies, Philip Carr, has praised the research despite being uninvolved in the findings. However, he does question, are these figures related to the underworld? If so, what was the relationship of the people who drew them to those beings of the underworld? It's believed that the cave was inhabited somewhere between 1,000 and 1,500 years ago. Simek explains that there is a significant lack of records when it comes to that far back in time. It's clear to archaeologists that these findings connect to modern Native American communities which still adhere to their ancient traditions as much as they are able. These various beliefs and traditions are part of their cultures and heritage. The wonderful cultures of the people who drew these cave glyphs live on with their descendants. 
In Samick's own words, archaeology is not always about the dead. Amazon activists mourn the passing of Man of the Hole, the last of his tribe. Brazil has some of the last remaining fully indigenous tribes in the world. These tribes are preserved in their own world, away from our highly technical modern society. One such tribe was the tribe of the Man of the Hole. In the Rondonia state, on the Tanaru land, the tribe lived and slowly depleted in population as the decades passed. The final and last member of this tribe, the aforementioned Man of the Hole, was found dead inside a hammock this August. FUNAI, the Brazilian organization tasked with protecting indigenous lands and tribes, keeps tabs on these places and individuals from a distance to observe them and ensure their safety. The tribal man obtained his title as the man of the hole due to the countless deep holes he had often been seen digging. It is thought he passed away from natural causes at the estimated age of 60 with no evidence to suggest it was anything else. The Man of the Hole was thought to have lived in complete and utter isolation for at least 26 years without a single companion or friend to keep him company. According to Research and Advocacy Director for Survival International, Fiona Watson, no outsider knew this man's name or even very much about his tribe, and with his death the genocide of his people is complete. Now we may never know the truth about this ancient tribe, their customs, and culture are lost forever. Greedy ranchers slaughtered most of the man's tribe in the 1970s. The ranchers were looking to expand their land. Only he and six other tribe members survived this carnage, but in 1995, illegal miners invaded their area and took the lives of the remaining six, leaving him as the tragic sole survivor. Outside communication was attempted by organizations trying to reach out to him but these attempts were returned with understandable aggression given that his only experiences with outsiders were brutal. The man set traps and aimed weapons at those attempting to reach out to him. Survival International employee Sarah Schenker stated, rejecting contact with outsiders was the man in the hole's best chance of survival. According to Schenker, he was the last of his tribe and so that is one more tribe made extinct not disappeared, as some people say. It's much more active and genocidal a process than disappearing. Although the tribe is now gone, activists are calling for action and lands with remaining indigenous tribes to be made permanently protected. The best thing we can do for the lost tribe and the man in the hole now is to remember them and mourn their passing, but also to ensure that such things do not happen to future tribes. Scientists in Australia have discovered the ingredients of life in 3.5 billion year old rocks. Scientists have searched for the earliest life on Earth for decades, led by their immense curiosity as to what started it all. The further back we go, the more difficult it is to decipher whether something is a legitimate fossil or just a stone, making it hard to know if a discovery is valid or not. In the 1980s, a rock was found in the Australian desert said to be a 3.5 billion year old fossil. This made it one of the oldest ever discovered Earth fossils, but the discovery was met with scrutiny and doubt. Now, scientists think they have finally figured it out. The fossil is what's referred to as a stromatolite and was uncovered in the Pilbara region of Australia. University of New South Wales geologist Raphael Baumgartner claims this is an exciting discovery for the first time. We're able to show the world that these stromatolites are definitive evidence for the earliest life on Earth. In Greenland, an alleged 3.7 billion year old fossil was said to have been found in 2016. This would have overshadowed the Pilbara fossils as the oldest found sign of life, but later analysis of the Greenland fossils showed that they were not fossils at all, but merely rocks. Although the Pilbara fossils were believed to be actual fossils, finding signs of life in them proved tricky for the scientists involved, as although they possessed the right structure, they lacked organic matter. The samples of the fossils were sliced thinly using various techniques and scanned with a process called electron microscopy. The thorough analysis revealed that the stromatolites are made up of pyrite, 
a mineral full of nanoscopic pores which had organic material inside of them that heavily resembled microbe colonies. In other words, they found the proof they needed to confirm the fossils as the earliest indication of life on Earth we have to date. Baumgartner states, understanding where life could have emerged is really important in order to understand our ancestry. And from there, it could help us understand where else life could have occurred, for example, where it was kick-started on other planets. But what do you make of these new discoveries? Be sure to let us know your thoughts in the comment section below and help us by growing this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.